Hi, my name is Jenny Long and this is David and uh, we're happy to greet you today. Uh, I want to greet you in Kum Kum Ko Mayate Isiba Kumka Ku Jesu Tsang Isiba Tsaku In the fall of 1986 uh, Jenny and I, I was working as a driver, a delivery man for an office products firm and we were trying to build up our support. We've been trying to build up support for three years. We uh, were up to 31 percent and had been for several months. So churches were giving to us but they were starting to wonder, those churches, about how long it was going to take us to arrive uh, on the field. And then um, Racine Bible Church wrote us and asked us when did, did we think we were going to arrive. And I really went through a crisis at that time because, you know, our lives were sort of on hold. I didn't want to drive a truck for the rest of my life and be raising support for the rest of my life. And God had really called us to Botswana. So, um, so I had a sort of crisis with God and I said, look, you've gotten us into this. You know, you're going to have to do something. You're in charge here. Uh, we're serving you and this is your project. So we really need you to start <laughs> moving moving us to Botswana. Or closing the door. Yeah, or closing the door. And I, I, I you know, God hadn't told me anything different, but uh, it was uh, that moment. So uh, we got a letter from Racine saying, when are you going to get to the field? And, and I sort of desperately, boldly wrote them and said, well, actually, you, you folk are in a better position to answer that, <laughs> that question than we are, because we don't know. We, we're ready to go, but we can't go until we have support. So our Thanksgiving gift for that year was to get a letter from Racine. It was a call. Taking, yeah, it was a phone call, uh, saying that they were taking on a substantial amount of our support. And so, so begin this relationship where Racine has been our, our largest supporter for all of these years as we've worked in Botswana. And that day, didn't we jump from 31 to 64 or something percent? Yes, yes, we jumped to 64 percent. Uh, that was in November of 86. And uh, when your support gets up that high, your financial support, then other churches begin to, to respond and kick in. So we were on the field uh, in less than a year after that. Uh, we went to the field in 1987. The other thing we just want to highlight, I mean, 33 years of prayers and, and your prayer support was just um, absolutely essential through our orientation the first term, church planting, and then actually moving toward mission leadership. And through the mission leadership, really tumultuous times within our mission, and then, and then the work in the desert. Uh, doing Bible translation. So anyway, in 2016, uh, you folks sent us three people to help. We were well along in the translation, but we really wanted to do something with music. We had an ethnomusicologist from Wycliffe Bible Translators, and his specialty was to prompt people to produce Christian music in their own language and musical uh, style. So we had a two-week um, workshop to do this and uh, Racine had written and said uh, can you use help and we said yes we can use help during this time so they they sent us uh, John Anderson, Kirk uh, Anderson and uh, Tim, Hummerson. Tim Hummerson. They were sort of the archetypal um, short-term helpers uh, mission team. They came in uh, and set up their sleeping quarters in a tent in our yard in the desert there on the sand um, they did everything that we asked them to. There were people who we could explain the situation once, and then they would just take over. John, for instance, during these two weeks, he was in charge of the water, and it involved uh, going with 50-gallon drums in the truck to the tap in the village, filling these up, and getting the water up on top of a tripod in our yard. Um, so it would feed our system, but we were going through like a barrel a day. And then there was water to the guest house where all the, the participants were staying. And he just did that. I showed him how to do it once, and I didn't have to worry about it. Kirk, not surprisingly, did all of our driving for us over not very well marked roads, um, gravel and sand, uh, long distances to pick up participants and get food, and everybody just helped all the way around. Uh, the other part of it was the day that they arrived, we um, learned that Jenny had colorectal cancer. So that was a big hit. And 
just having them with us, uh, their prayers for us, their um, kind concern, even with this news, uh, they had we had to launch right into this uh, workshop because it was scheduled, and um, it was right after the workshop that we went to Johannesburg and they began treatment for Jenny. They were perfect in their ministry to us during that time, sort of uh, representative of uh, Racine's ministry in our lives and um, help with our ministry through the years. So we really thank God for you for that. The other thing is we, I wanted to ask uh, prayer. We don't need any money. We have everything that we need for me to return. The, our translation is produced now. We've, we finished our part of it on the field, but the audio wasn't mastered until three months after we got back. So the people really don't have their translation, and we need to go back to the settlements of the Kalahari with the SD and micro SD cards in our hands and the solar players that have been produced and actually put the translation in the hands of the people. So uh, that's uh, a job that I will be doing with the team uh, that we formed and uh, hopefully next month into May we'll see, um, we'll see what the COVID-19 uh, what hindrance that is. It's threatening the whole thing uh, as it is many things. But um, we, we'll see about that. But we ask your prayer for that. That's really, really a crucial finish to our part in the ministry in Botswana and the translation effort. Wish we could have questions and all. Wish we could be with you. But uh, this is the next best thing, I suppose. <laughs>